today, that's normal. Anybody that comes in today looking like that, like our friends in Connorsville did, no one thinks anything about it. You, could, you know, and if the situation determines if it's good. If the situation is right, whether God says it's right or wrong, it's right for them. This was in 1978. Well, it goes back further than that. It goes back to 715 B.C. Nothing has changed. How is it? This is an expression of lamenting. It indicates that that had occurred, which was a matter of grief. Isaiah just didn't sling it out there. He was grieved over the fact that they had turned. Prophet had stated the principles of divine government. He had urged the people to reason with God and had affirmed his willingness to pardon. But it would seem that they would not repent. They were so wicked, they were so perverse, that there was no hope for their reformation. And I think, I think Isaiah finally realized that because he knew that judgment was coming and the captivity was coming and the 70 years of captivity was coming. He knew that was coming. He knew they had passed the point in their, in their life that captivity was going to come. And states, and, and, and so his mind is full of this subject and he repeats the charge of their wickedness all the way through the book of Isaiah. And he states what must be the consequences. It's going to happen. And when they fell into captivity in Babylon, as we look through the book of Daniel, what happened? How did it happen? We are God's people. How did it happen that we're under the thumb of Nebuchadnezzar? How did it happen? We're God's chosen people. It can't happen. We've been thrown out of our land. We're, we're you know, they, they, they didn't come to church. They didn't hear it. You know, there is nothing any more important than for you to be in the house of God, to hear the Word of God being preached. You know what I would do if I weren't here and could not be here and you had an opportunity to hear, hear it? I would do it. You know, if, if you miss a service that I'm in and you're not in the church somewhere else, you know, but you know, listen, let me tell you, you know, you can you know you can listen to Charles Stanley and you can listen to Dave Jeremiah and you can listen to John MacArthur and you can listen to Chuck Swindoll and all those guys are good. But here's what I'm trying to help you understand is and I found this out with Martin Lloyd Jones. Martin Lloyd Jones for nearly fifty years priest and he never had one of his sermons recorded. That makes me mad. Because I like his sermons. I'd like to have heard him preach, but he did not want his sermons recorded because he felt that his sermons was meant for the people that were there that Sunday. This is, he, he said, I'm preaching to the people who are there that Sunday, and there's something about preaching in front of somebody because I'm preaching. I want you to be a part and involved in, the, in that sermon I'm preaching is for you. And it's not like, you know, I love to hear John MacArthur preach. I just love to hear him preach. I've heard, I've heard nearly every sermon he's preached for the last 30 years. But it's not near as important as you hearing your pastor preach because he knows you better than anybody else knows you. And so, but the, he kept repeating the charges of their wickedness. And he stated that there must be consequences. And sometimes we fail to do that as pastors. Notice says the faithful city. It is, it, it is, it, he's talking about Jerusalem. And it represents here the image that they were faithful, once faithful to her husband, once a devout and attached partner. Jerusalem was thus once, in the former days, it was the seat of the pure worship of God the place where his praise was celebrated and where his people came to offer sincere devotion. It, in the scripture, the church is often 
represented it under the image of a wife, and it knows the tenderness and the sacredness of the union. So when you fall into the church, when you come to the church, it's a holy place to be in. This is a holy place. We are holy people serving the holy God, offering our services up to Him because we love God. And there's no room for anger. There's no room for uh, bitterness in the church. This is a place we set all that aside and somehow we come together and we offer God our, our praise and our worship. That's what it's all about. A harlot. She has proved to be false, treacherous, unfaithful, the unfaithfulness of the people of God, particularly their idolatry, is often represented under the idea of unfaithfulness to the marriage contract. Jeremiah chapter 3, verses 8 and 9. Richard, Jeremiah chapter 3, verses 8 and 9. How is the faithful city become a harlot? How does that happen? How is... How how is a faithful city become a harlot? How does it happen? The seed of Jerusalem, in which were the temple, the pure worship of God, and was in the tribe of Judah, which ruled with God, and was very faithful with the saints, wherein the ten tribes revolted and fell into the hands in the sins of Jeroboam. But now, in Isaiah's time, was become like a treacherous wife to her husband, unfaithful to the Lord. Jeremiah chapter 3, verses 8 and 9, Richard. 3, 8 and 9? Yeah, uh, 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 chapter 3, verse 8 and 9. And I saw when, for all the, co the causes of her by backsliding, Israel committed adultery. I put her away and given her a bill of divorce. And her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went and played the harlot also. Came to pass in the likeness of her order, and she defiled the land and committed her adultery with stones and stops and stops. You know, you say, well, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't marry some person of the same sex. I wouldn't kill anybody. I wouldn't do this and I wouldn't do that. We're talking about spiritual adultery, idolatry. And those, we love something better than we do God. Uh, we, we commit spiritual adultery. Adultery with stocks and stones and in the time of Christ were a wicked and an adulterous generation corrupting the word and worship of God and that was in Christ's time. And I think we do the same thing in corrupting the worship of God by, by our, sometimes with our church activities it has nothing to do with glorifying God. Oh, I'm sure we could pack out this church if we had uh, George Strait to come. Mandalark Lemon. And one time we had, one time we had, uh, we had, uh, who did we have to come? Uh, in Don's church one time we had uh, Max Palmer. Several times, seven foot eleven. I was eight foot two. And way up there. 243 teenagers came that Sunday. Somewhere in that area. Next Sunday? <laughs> it doesn't have showed up. Right? They didn't come to worship God. They come to see the world's tallest man and, and to come to hear him. You know, you can choose to just... Dis, dis, uh, desecrate God's worship by having someone else come who gives our testimony they got saved. And we believe how many wrestlers get saved. Lex Luger got saved. Uh, who was the guy uh, 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 that uh, Mrs. Elizabeth uh, yeah, I read just recently of course she died, she committed suicide. But, but her husband, Lex Luger, after this happened got saved. And think about, you know, here's what we want to do. Some church wants to get him immediately into church to give his testimony. Why do I want to hear a testimony of some man who's just been saved three weeks and, 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 and you know, and we want to show people that's how salvation is. You know, that God wants us to worship him and not someone else. 
How has she become a harlot? She was full of right, lodged in righteousness, and now a murder. How is how can that happen? You have a covenant, marriage covenant with God. You're not to break that covenant. And how easy it is because we get our eyes off of God and we see what others are doing. You know, it's just best not to entertain you with the world because you begin to like it. I love uh, Reese's Species. If I get it packed, I'm determined not to eat all of them at one time. I bet you I make 12 trips to the cabinet and get a little bit at a time. And before I know it, I've eaten the whole pack. I just can't stop with one. There's some things that, man, I, I haven't done it recently. Yes, I did. Sorry. I tried to hide it from charity. And, and uh, the latest, you know, what I'm trying to say is when you expose yourself to something that's good, to your taste, you want to go back and get more. You want to go back and get more right. It's normal. So the best thing is, is stay away from it. If you don't want to eat it, don't buy it. Don't get it. Right? Don't keep it in the house. If you keep it in the house, you're going to eat it. My philosophy is, if I have a gallon of ice cream, my philosophy is if I eat it all at once, and I don't want to have any left to eat it. So within two days, I've eaten a half a gallon of ice cream. Easy. So I don't have ice cream in my house, do I? We don't have ice cream in our house because I will eat it. <laughs> if it's there, I'm going to eat it. So just stay away from it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> she was full of justice, righteousness, once lodged in her. There was a time there seemed to be a sense of righteousness in America. Right? Yeah. There was a time that living right after God's law was consistently resident in their palace and in all their dwellings. You can see evidence of God in their midst. It's now, it's, it, it, Christians don't even have a Bible anymore. You, know, you remember the family Bibles? You remember, well, I think you probably, I, I think this church earlier, they would give away family Bibles to somebody. I mean, family Bibles, it was, you could, there was one on the, up in front. Everybody had family Bibles, right? Growing up? I don't know if, you, I, you know, do we still have them? I, I mean, you know, I mean, the world. I mean, you know, we as, as old folks, now, I don't have a family Bible. I mean, I don't have, I don't, I don't have one of those anymore. I don't think, anyway. Uh, now we, now we, but you know what I'm trying to say is, is that we were every 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 place in our home, you could it was demonstrated that you were a Christian. Verse 22, your silver has become what? Dross. Dross. I had, I had to, and your drink is with diluted water. Dross. Psalm 119, 119. Uh, Psalm 119, 119, Jimmy. And uh, Mary, Mary, not yet, yeah, Mary, Ezekiel 22, 18. Ezekiel 22, 18, while you're looking at it. Did he read Jeremiah? Yes. What part of 119? 119, 119. 119, 119. There's, one, there's 119 verses, right? Yeah, I got it. It's 100, it's 100, I mean, 176 verses. You don't have to read all of them. Just read 119. Thy silver. I mean, the sentiment in this verse, as it is explained by the following, is... Thy princes and thy people have become corrupt. They have become polluted. 
Silver is used here to denote what should have been more valuable. Virtual princes are. Psalm 119, 119. Thou puttest away all the wicked, wicked of the earth like dross. Therefore, I love thy testimonies. That word dross, it means basic, baser metal which is separated from the pure in smoldering. It is a blue or no value. It is what comes off when you're making when you're doing when you're making steel. Is that what comes off? It has no value. And the expression means that the rulers have become debased and corrupt as if pure silver had been converted wholly to dross. That's what the drippings that came off. Notice it says in Ezekiel uh, Ezekiel 22, 18. Mary? Son of man, the house of Israel is to me become dross. All they, all they are dross. Brass and tin and iron and lead. Tin. In the midst of the furnace, they are broken and thrown into silver. Wine. Notice it said, then thy wine is mixed with water. Wine was regarded as the most pure and valuable drink among the ancients. Wine was regarded as the most pure and valuable drink among the ancients. It is used, therefore, to express that which should have been most valued and esteemed among them and their rulers. Well, what they did was they mixed it with water, as it were, as a figure of speech. According to the word renders, mixed it. They mixed it. By, it, it, it. It's a word that they diluted it. The word does not occur in the sense elsewhere in the scriptures, but the connection evidently requires it to be wine mixed with water is that which is weakened Diluted, rendered comparatively useless. So, with the elders and the rulers and the judges, the leadership was the leadership became as diluted wine. In other words.